Hey guys, uh, you know when I do my spring planting, I like to focus on one thing and then attack it, get it done, and then move on to the next. I'm not the kind of person that, that focuses well on many different things. Like when it's tomato time, I focus on them, get them done, move on to the next one. Unless I'm laying out, when I lay my garden out, I do that over the winter, I lay it all out, then I, then I lay out all of my, I have all of my uh, different plants in mind. But when it comes to actually planting, I just focus on one thing and then move on. Uh, so today I'm focusing on onions. Now, I'm, I do have a lot of, I always start, I'm, I mean, 95% of the onions I grow are from seed. And so I have like three or four trays of, of seedlings but they're only about this tall and I need to wait for them to get quite a bit bigger before I plant them out that's gonna be a couple weeks yet and so but I did go to the nursery and I picked up some uh, some transplants that were pretty cheap and I thought well I'm just gonna go ahead and get these they were just pennies and so I bought those and I so I need to plant those out and also some people were asking me about the walking onions now this was months ago they were asking me about two years ago, when I first started the walking onions, first time I've ever grown walking onions, I, I didn't do a specific video on them, but I talked about them in a video. And people wanted me to do more on them. And so I'm going to kind of hit on them today. But this summer or this fall, when they produce their bulblets on top, I'm going to go ahead and do a video just on walking onions. But for now, I'll just give you a rundown as their status and also bring you along when I plant these new transplants that I bought. Do you know one benefit of living here in Southern Oregon is that I can grow all year long. Now I can't grow tomatoes and stuff all year long. I can grow them in the greenhouse, but, uh, but all year long I can grow like, I've got spinach and I've got lettuce and stuff like that and kale it does really well I mean in the winter months it, it does stall a little bit it kind of slows down but when it starts warming up I mean these are already starting to take off like gangbusters and so um, but what I did here it's really funny when I planted the lettuce and the spinach in the fall I actually took some pea seeds that I had left over and I threw them in here and thought, okay, this is an experiment. We'll see what they do. And doggone it, they're now it warmed up and they're starting to come up. Look at this, <laughs> which, which is strange because I had allocated this spot for onions. But I was at the nursery and I saw these starts that they had and they were screaming deal. They were really cheap. And so for pennies, uh, you know each one of these works out to just pennies and so I'm gonna bring you in and I'll show you how I separate these I'm gonna plant them in here I'm gonna try not to disturb these peas okay so what you want to do is take your flat and take out one of the cells like this and then you'll notice it's root bound what I do is I just pull these roots down a little bit and then I crumble this soil in my hands back and forth back and forth until it's loose and what it'll do is you want to separate the roots of each individual plant because they come bunched what they do is they just throw a bunch of seeds in a cell and then just water it and whatever comes up that's what they sell so you want to separate these now you don't want to just go like this and yank them you want to do your best to kind of separate them and then once you do you're going to disturb the roots I mean, you're going to end up with, you know, you're going to end up with broken roots. That's just the way it is. But I always just pull them out like that. And then when you get the bottoms pulled like that, and that's what you want. You see how you just pull that bottom out? Then once you pull the bottom up, then these will start separating. See this? Like that. And we'll see what's left. Look at that. Only the only roots that were disturbed were very small ones. Now it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, you could probably be a little more aggressive than I am, but look, if you just kind of yank, you kind of pull this and then pull this down and then pull these up like this. Don't just yank them sideways, but pull this up like this. And then you've separated the roots and then you can go ahead and pull them side to side like that. See how that just pulls out like that? Now, because they were, they were so cheap, I'm going to just take all the biggest ones and plant the biggest ones in here. And I'm going to plant them just above where it looks like the bulb will start. So I'm going to 
dig a hole like this, plant that down, just like that. Now what's gonna happen is as this bulb grows, the bulb isn't gonna grow and go straight down. The bulb is gonna grow right from where it is. So it's gonna just grow like this and the bulb will come up above the soil and that's okay. Just let it grow, it's, the sun isn't gonna hurt it at all. And then what I'm gonna try to do is since some of these are pretty good size, I'm gonna grow them about six inches apart because I don't wanna to have to thin them. And there's no reason to thin them right now. Thinning means that when you, when you sow a whole bunch of seeds and they're really close together, you take the weak ones or small ones and, and take them out. I'm not gonna do that. These should grow as they, as they stand. So just like that, there's a big one here. And you know, you don't have to be, I mean, you don't have to be dainty about these. These things are very, they are very resilient. And this one had five in it, but look at these, these are beautiful. And you'll notice some are a little bit brown, that's just because they're, they're, they're saying plant me and <laughs> they're looking for nutrients because there's not an awful lot of nutrients in one of these cells. You'll notice these cells, if you take a look at that, look how root bound that is. It's looking for water, it's looking for nutrients, and so they're gonna get a little bit brown, but that's okay. Once they're in here, they're gonna start picking, you're gonna be perking up, and they're gonna grow like gangbusters. Go out to your nursery and get some onion starts. Or if you want a, a large variety, uh, to pick from go out to Dixondale Farms and Dixondale Farms will ship them to you the only problem with that is you have to make sure you get the right kind your local nursery is going to tell you if you need long day or short day onions that is very critical in growing in your area you just can't get onion seeds and then plant them and expect them to do well without doing a little bit of research and I'll do another video to explain you guys how, uh, what the difference is between short day and long day and why you need to uh, pick the right variety for your growing area. Let me try to give you one up close here. You kind of want to loosen it up and then pull down on these roots like this. Get them pulled down here, kind of straighten them out. You don't want to just yank them like this because you'll just completely rip the bottom off of the, off of the actual plant. So you want to loosen them up first, pull them down, and then when you do that, don't pull them this way, pull them like this, and separate them like this, because you want to separate the root systems like that. So it looks like one flat plant like that, and then once you do that, see, they'll just pull right apart. See that? Look at this. Okay, I want to show you this. This is hilarious. This is my neglected garlic bed. Actually, let me back up a second. Yesterday, I was talking to a lady, and she said that she doesn't grow any food because she kills everything. Nothing will grow for her. Okay, if you're one of those people, <laughs> I suggest that you grow walking onions. Now, this is my neglected garlic bed. And people know by neglected, that have seen my, my videos, that I don't do anything with this. I keep saying, I want everything in here to die because I want to pull this bed out of here, get rid of the cinder blocks and build the 16, more 16 foot raised beds. So last fall, I pulled out the walking onions from here. Well, I thought I did. <laughs> I pulled everything out of here and put them in my 16 foot bed in their new home. Lo and behold, over the winter, these things started growing again. And now I've got walking onions that look at how healthy they are. They are. Now, if you don't know, if you've never grown walking onions before, if you don't know what they are, they, they grow a bulb, like right here. You see this is about two inches. So they do grow a bulb, but it's just not very big. But they taste just like regular onions. Um, and then on the very tops, these things will grow up, I mean, a good four feet. And on the top, they'll grow these, these little bulbs, these, these little bulb, bu I, people call them all bubbles and bulbets. I don't know what they call them. But anyways, they're just like little, little you know, they're just like small onions. And so you take these and separate these and plant these, you get more walking onions. 
Now, if you let them go, the reason why they're called walking onions, when they get really tall, they will bend over and they will touch the ground. These little bulbs will root, you'll get a new plant, it will grow up and it will fall down. And so it's called walking, Egyptian walking onion. They've got many names, but that's how they propagate, how they reproduce. And so, the, so I went and took all of these, I pulled them out too, and lo and behold, this is what I get. So I'm kind of in a quandary because I don't know if I should leave these because they look so beautiful. They look like, I mean, they're great. They look, they look nice and um, I wanna get rid of this bed. So what I might do is transplant these out of here. Uh, I've never transplanted walking onions before. I've pulled the, the bulbs off the top and, and planted those, uh, but I might transplant these. But even down here, I've showed before, shown, showed, showed before, down here that I can't get rid of the uh, the garlic either. Let me let me turn this and show you. Now all of that garlic is not supposed to be there. Let me show you down here past the compost pile. Look on the very end there. Look at that. Look at those. Those are supposed to be. I was supposed to get rid of all of this garlic. Well, guess what? I just can't get rid of it. If you have problems growing anything, grow garlic and onions because you just can't kill them. So I think what I might do is transplant these into the bed that I had over here for them. Let me take you over there and show you where I planted these little guys. Now this is the first 16 foot bed that I built. And I took and planted the little bulbs in here uh, last fall and then come spring, they started coming up and they're looking good but uh, I have no room actually for the rest of them. This is garlic here. So this in June, this is gonna come out of here. Uh, I'll be, or yeah, maybe mid June, end of June, I'll be harvesting the garlic. So I might just make this a walking onion bed, but I don't want 16 feet of walking onions. But anyways, I'm not sure what to do with those. I could build another bed and transplant those out and put them in another bed. But to tell you the truth, I really don't need that many walking onions. And if you're wondering about this guy here, you probably don't care about my dog, but um, he's got that cone on because he had uh, eye infection and it, it was in his right eye. His right eye was almost all closed and then it actually looks like it may have spread to his left eye. And uh, the poor little guy has been having drops in his eyes and we had to put the cone on so he didn't scratch his eye. And so he's been to the vet twice and we went to the emergency vet and spent all night there from like 12 a.m. until 6 a.m. Uh, because that was an emergency vet and it was like really busy. They had accident dogs and stuff like that. So anyways, that's why he has the cone on. So I know a little diversion here. Now you know I could not do an onion video without showing this, uh, this round raised bed that I built from galvanized roofing material. The reason why, because people have been mentioning uh, that I see I when I did the video on how to build this I told them that this was going to be a dedicated onion bed But they haven't seen anything happen yet. Well, let me explain to you what happened with this About a year ago. Well, actually it wasn't quite a year, but toward the end of last summer um, Somebody gave me a bag of Bulbs they were I don't know what what variety they were. They didn't even have a label on them and She just said plant these they're extra well, I don't usually plant from bulbs. So I took the bag, it was a mesh bag, and I put it on top of the freezer in the garage and I completely forgot about it. And after I built this, I was in the garage one day and I was pulling stuff off the freezer and I noticed this mesh bag and I thought, I barely remembered her giving it to me. And I thought, well, you know what I'll do? I'll just bring them out and I'll stick them in here because I really didn't have a place to put them yet because I'm redoing this whole North Garden. So I stuck them in here and I didn't expect much because they were really dried up and they just, they looked like they were just, they looked like toast. I mean, they, they didn't have any, didn't look like there's any life to them. So I stuck them in here and lo and behold, they're actually coming up. So I'm not going to touch this bed until I'm ready to plant the transplants and I will see how many came up. But so far I've got, I mean, there were probably 30 in that bag and I've got, I've got a dozen of them coming up here. So that's what's happening with I'll bring you in closer and show you what's what's going on with these bulbs. 
Okay, well, it never fails. You can hear the uh, the frogs out there singing to us. Um, what happened here, it's really funny. It's it, it's kind of baffling that they, they seem to be growing around the perimeter. I've got two or three in the center, but that's it. I got one here, one here, and one there. The rest of them are kind of growing around the perimeter. I don't know, I don't know if that means anything, but um, I'm going to leave these. I'm gonna let them be and see what happens by the end of April or say, uh, you know, because I, if nothing has come up, I'm going to call the rest of them bust, and I'll just let these grow. These will be my mysteries because I don't know what kind they are, but I will plant probably my Kelsey's or the candy onions in here with them and um, from the transplants that I have that I started from seed. So I needed to show this because I uh, had told people that this was going to be an onion bed, and I'm going to build probably three or four more of these. I'm really, I'm really pleased at how they turned out. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link in the description so you can go out and take a look on how to build one of these. I, I'm, I'm pleased with them. They're, they're holding up well. Okay, and there was one more thing that I wanted to show you. Um, I, in a forum that I belong to, the issue came up about a video I did two years ago. Or gosh, was it longer than, longer than that? It was a long time ago, actually. It seems like it was probably four or five years ago. And uh, it came up about me growing the uh, green onions from store-bought and I think the name of the video was endless supply of green onions something like that and a uh, few people had mentioned that there's no way that they're still alive they probably lasted that one season well I got news for you they're still going gangbusters and I'll take you over in the uh, grape arbor where I have them and I will show you that all I'm doing still cutting them off and then they're, they're growing right back and they survive the winter. Now our winters don't get severe, but they have, they've been down into a single digit and they're still coming back every spring. So uh, they're doing well. I'll show you those. Now they're in the bed that is um, losing soil, losing depth. Now I talked about it before. I fixed the south grape arbor uh, because I put more topsoil in it. But when I, when I built these when I built these grape arbors, what happened was I filled them with a with a grow mix that I got from the local uh, compost place, and the grow mix they they didn't really give me the ratios as to how much topsoil and compost and everything that was in it, but in my opinion there was way too much organic matter, way too much compost because those things have sunk down at least a foot or more. And um, so I, what I need to do in the south bed, I pulled the grapes and I, uh, I planted new grapes and transplanted some of the ones from cuttings into that bed and uh, fixed that. So now that's going really well. And so I need to do that to the north end of the grape arbor. So I'm going to pull those, um, those grapes actually out of there because they are not seedless and I'm going to put in new ones which are seedless and I just don't like the seeded grapes. So I'm going to pull those out. So I'm going to pull out the, the uh, green onions, but I'm going to transplant those right back in again. So they're still the same ones that I grew way back years ago. So let me take you over there and show you. And here they are right here, right next to the onions. Look how far, look, <laughs> look how far that soil has dropped. And that is what happens when you have too much compost in your raised bed mix. So I'm going to actually pull these out of here, but these are the green onions that I have been growing and I come out every time I need some. Of course, uh, over the winter they kind of uh they kind of stalled a little bit, but they they they're still growing and they're doing well. So I come out, top them off and they just keep on coming back. So those are the green onions from store bought. So that's all that's going on right now for onions and uh, stay tuned because I will be uh, doing a video in a few weeks on uh, planting the transplants that I have that I started from, from, from seed. So uh, keep watching for that. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that little bell down there so you'll get notifications when I upload a new video. All right. Catch